Expedition Overland is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in part by Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Magpul. Hard goods and apparel. Warn. Go prepared. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Equipped Expedition Outfitters. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Xventure Trailers. And in association with Toyota. Let's go places. A uni at one time was a distribution hub for the trains carrying minerals on their way to the Pacific Ocean ports. It was believed that Bolivia would flourish with a good transportation system. Construction, however, was short-lived. This morning we're in a different type of graveyard. It's a train graveyard. So we just all woke up, we we're warming up in the sun a little bit, and we're gonna go check it out uh, before we head into town. The lines were built by British engineers who arrived near the end of the 19th century and formed a sizable community in Uyuni. But the rails were sabotaged by the local indigenous people who saw it as an intrusion into their lives. In the 1940s, the mineral industry collapsed and the trains abandoned. I am always a fan of transportation and different modes of transportation in general. And to see how complex these machines are versus kind of some of the machines that we have doing the same things today, it's, um, it's just really crazy to see how much work and how much effort went into doing so little work compared to like what our modern trains can do and how little effort it takes to make those do 10 times the amount of work. And there's just, how many of them? 20, 30? Uh, apparently these were all brought here, or left here, 1940. They've been here ever since. A lot of them have been uh, scrapped people have taken stuff off of them, but this is really cool stuff. It's just old school machinery that was very basic, but it got the job done. Sir, you want to go ahead and decipher this for us? Yeah, well, this is a calendar, and I don't oh. expect all of you guys to understand it. Okay. Oh, no, it's quite, co is it the corn calendar? It's quite complex. This is actually not corn. Mm. This is a mining calendar. A mining calendar. Ancient miners down here, and yeah. this, is, this is the silver god. Uh-huh. Huatatisi. Uh huh, yeah. And this is the mother goddess, Huatatisi. Mm. Often confused. It's pretty complex. <laughs> I could probably dive into it a little deeper, but please it'd be do. right over you, so I'll no, hold please. back. I'll hold back. <laughs> Before our convoy moves south, we have a repeat in chores in town. Well, it was a real busy afternoon. We got restocked on food again, got more fuel, made sure that we we're topped off on all our jerrys, even got a better price on fuel today and uh, got our trucks washed, got all that salt off of them, and uh, got the undercoating put back on, uh, and we're ready to rock now. So now we've got about a three hour push. We're gonna see how far we can make it tonight. Beyond this point, we're gonna be uber conservative on our fuel. We have a long ways to go before we could potentially find more fuel. Should be fun, here we go. Our final four days here will be spent in the most southern region of Bolivia. It's a wild place full of volcanoes, geysers, huge mountain passes, and beautiful lakes. We will also see if our southern exit is possible from Bolivia into Chile, via the mountain outpost located on the very southern edge of the country. The highways are all dirt in this region, but pavement is not far behind. So make sure to get here now before it's all oil. The region is not disappointing. Our first campsite is spectacular. Okay, so we're uh, we're just setting up camp here this evening uh, in this really cool rock formation. Um, it's called Valley de la Rocas, which is Espanol for Valley of the Rocks or Rock Valley. 
and uh, really neat. Giant uh, rocks everywhere. And I can't wait to see what it looks like in the morning. It's a little dark when we pulled in, but uh, I'm sure it'll be incredible. I want to get to see, uh, see these rock formations just spreading out over this whole landscape. Heather, you did it again. She knocked it out of the park tonight, man. Top notch grub right there. Definitely tasty, tasty, tasty stuff. As far as today, yeah, just we gotta get on the road and uh, we'll motor as far as we can. If we don't make it 100, we don't make it to Laguna, Colorado, not the end of the world. There's stops along the way. I mean, you can just kind of see what the train's like. Yeah. We want awesome camp spots. We need to get to the end, but if we don't mind pulling off the dirt road, just doing a bush camp, it's totally fine. There's plenty of room. Nobody's gonna be bothered. Let's do it. Let's go. We out. It would have been nice to spend the whole day there, relaxing. The road to the Laguna Lakes is an overlander's paradise. It's rugged. It changes conditions to silt, mud, and snow. It really has it all. Definitely keep your momentum with the trailer. It's just, it just wants to drag you down. Someday the coolest invention ever was gonna be a, a power driven trailer for situations like this. But this is where the gentleman supposedly is running the grader on it. He's charging 10 bucks, so we may see him another five or 10 miles here. We're at full speed uphill <laughs> to get us to pay 10 Bolivianos. And uh, I was paying the man. Yeah, I'm glad too. Even though we are in the middle of nowhere, people are out working hard to make it happen. This guy grades a small section of road and charges you to pass on it, perhaps illegally. All right, we're paid up. Yeah, it's nice. Look at the graded section here. Four lakes here right in a row. This is the first one, which is Lake Kirionda. We pass our first of several lakes and see our first flamingos. The weather is cold, but spirits are high. Nate and I had to stay outside and get the shot, and our fingers are frozen holding onto our cameras. <laughs> Thank you to Jeff and Heather for constantly. <laughs> Jeff and Heather for constantly. Hey, <laughs> we're constantly picking us up all the time and yes. saving our butts. Yeah. So we really appreciate it. I wonder what makes that snow do that? It's just the wind and then how it faces. Done. That would be my guess. Then I assume like sand gets in it and heats it up a certain way and melts it that way. This is really rare that the snow is here. Uh, yeah. Is it, is it yeah. It, it's, it's usually not. It, it's like point, up here. point zero one or I don't know. Kurt was saying how much little precipitation this place gets. Oh yeah, I do remember. And this that. is a ton of snow. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is a ton of snow. So. Like it's kind of a thing of beauty, he was saying, to be able to look, to see snow in this, right. this area, because it's never, it's never here. Right. Because of that, roads are everywhere. And while changing paths, I fail to carry enough speed through some deeper, crusty snow. <laughs> All 
right, here we go. Crawl controls on, see what he does. No, it's pretty deep right here. All right, so I think we should just winch out of this to you, Rufio, if you can get ahead of me. Copy that. Drive in, taking in tension. Here we go. Yeah, we're moving. All right, I might have, I might be able to roll a little bit here. I'll give you some slack. Traction control is taking over now. It's doing a pretty good job. We're about to good ground. I think I'm on it. All right, I think I'm good. I think that's the highest recovery I've ever had in my life. 15, 15,269. Yeah, that's cool. That's one for the books. soon. All right, I'm gonna get a little power to get out of here. All right, okay, we're up and running X3. Yay! Roger. There they are, there's X3. Finally met up with them. Still in lack of his fuel, and this is taking quite a bit of fuel to get through this. But uh, hopefully it's within our reserves that we've planned for, but it's gonna be close. When we were planning this trip, we monitored the weather here. This area was a major concern for us. Just a month or so ago, this region was at times impassable due to snow or mud. With darkness approaching, we get to see an iconic feature, tree rock. This place ever. We camped right over here. Yeah. Um, uh, who knew that when we got here, it's full <laughs> snow. Yeah. I was pretty excited that we got to pull off the road for a second here and drive by Tree Rock. I saw this in a brochure that uh, was talking about this road and I thought, that's awesome, we need to stop there. And then we were driving down the road and Kurt and I look over and go, wait, there's Tree Rock, let's stop. So we got to stop and see it and it's cool and I'm really cold. So I'm gonna get back in the truck. That was really awesome, thank you, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you, navigators. Samson just hit quarter tank. Roger. Rufio is a tick, tick and a half above quarter. So, we're going to check the sign here. Yeah, a lot of people camp right in this spot, according to iOverlander. A lot of uh, updates from people camping here. The weather and altitude are starting to take their toll. This night in particular will be rough, with winds in the mid 40s. Need help? Um, I could use help or something. Actually, no, I'm gonna just chop stuff. Uh, Rice is going, and I'm gonna chop. It is super windy. It's pretty cold. It was about 37 when I looked uh, when I got out of Rufio, and uh, so instead of cooking outside of the habitat, uh, the last uh, well tonight and then the last couple mornings. Um, I've had the option to cook inside the habitat, which has been really nice considering the weather and um, being out of the wind for sure. And uh, and it's pretty warm in the habitat actually, so I'm, I'm quite thankful tonight especially. 
that I have uh, the option um, to be cooking in inside a structure and not out in the elements. Oh, you're gonna come out here and join us common folks. Not in the wind. <laughs> The next morning we wake to a beautiful lake, Laguna, Colorado. Famous for its red water and stunning white flamingos. We had a great night here at Laguna, Colorado. So this morning we woke up and have this beautiful view over the red lake. And as the sun gets higher, the algae opens up and gets even redder. So it's really neat to kind of watch it transforming. Uh, it was a really windy night, it was rough. Not all of us slept too great. And uh, we've decided to start emptying some of our jerry cans. Uh, so that's what the guys are doing right now. But we're having fun. And this morning, all of these land cruisers showed up, which is pretty cool with uh, some tours from out of a hostel down the way. So Kurt and I have been kind of oogling over that because it's pretty cool. So yeah, having a good time. Our next objective is to make it to the southern border station where we can check out our vehicles from Bolivia on our way to the geographic border itself. Between us and the border is a huge pass and we're approaching the highest elevation point of the expedition. wind up here check out this uh, pretty cool canyon on the right that's a known camp spot but no way you can get in there now with the snow that's, that's cool all right guys this is probably going to be the highest we can reach on the expedition we may buzz up a side road to the bolivian tip office to hand in our vehicle permits but we're just about i got two different gps's going here and i'm hovering right around 15 850 Next up, the TIP office, located on a very remote site in the mountains near a mine. This is crazy, they're opening the gate. In, in theory, we should be able to check out our vehicles from Bolivia here, and then make our way down to the immigration, but this is one of the highest uh, in TIP places in the world where you can export a vehicle or check out a vehicle from a country. It's common that the Geographic Borders TIP office is closed, but this office is open 365 days a year. United States. Yes. Yeah. That's it, is uh, Mr. Indiana Jones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is your picture? Okay, sir. Uh, I see this picture in the. Uh, police office. Oh, did you? Uh, uh -oh. Police office. <laughs> they, they, they offer uh, so much money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Life. How much? Yeah. Get uh, more. <laughs> so it money. should be a million. Muchas <laughs> <laughs> gracias. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Is it okay? Have a nice travel, sir. Is it okay we put a sticker on the window? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, okay? Yeah. yeah. Gracias. Oh, no. Gave me permission to put a sticker on the window. And uh, where should we put it? Out on our own or should buy our friends by a portal? Put it by friends, yeah. Let's put it by our friends. Here. Yeah. Yeah. 
It doesn't seem fair, but no matter where we go, Nate continues to have bathroom issues. So sometimes there's not enough pressure for the toilet to cycle through. It's happening to me right now, of course. So we gotta, I think he's grabbing more water. And actually put water back in the top of the toilet so it can rotate back in through. Just, it's just never ending. Yeah. Oh, every time, <laughs> every time, I just can't like have a normal peaceful one. Last time I forgot my coat. The time before that, it was on the floor. This time I like couldn't flush the thing. <laughs> one of these days, I won't have a story about my. Uh, You're number one in the number twos, Nate. <laughs> With our vehicles checked out of Bolivia, we get to wander through it for just a little longer. With our highest point achieved and our trucks checked out, we decide that this is the perfect time to have our stashed Mountain Dew cans. Oh, it's Mountain Dew time! It's Mountain Dew Day! Woo! Oh, Mountain Dew Day! Woo! This has been in transit since May. 16th, I think. Yes, yeah, so I purchased these at a gas station in Prescott, or no, in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. I bought a 24 pack for over the next boat. And we got through about 18 of them. Let's do this, Kurt. I've missed that. Ooh, I've missed that. Wow. That's tasty. I think it's even tastier than ah. 10,000 feet. I'm having a mouthful. Oh. Like so good. But the geysers and the mud is like really soft and squishy. What? Oh! <laughs> Direct hit! Direct hit! Uh, we're just having fun. Gonna check out the geysers, see what it's all about. Border crossing uh, coming out of Bolivia and now we're heading into Chile. So it's kind of neat because the vehicles are basically in no man's land. We are still in Bolivia as people, but the vehicles don't really exist. So we've got another 80 miles to go, 80 kilometers to go to get to our next checkpoint into Chile. And in the meantime, we're just kind of enjoying the sights and uh, the smells and checking out what's around us. So it's been a great day. I'm having a blast. I'm excited to see what's next. We have entered a new climate zone now that we've dropped out of the high mountains and wind has become an issue. What about those rocks on the left? How incredible are those things? They're pretty wild, huh? What? <gasps> those are called Dolly's Rock, Dolly's Rock. And there is camping right over there too. There's a couple eye overlander spots over there. We have dropped uh, at 2,000 feet since uh, the border station. Let's be out of water anyway. Where we're going is right at the bottom of that volcano. just rolled into a bit of a camp here. We've been kind of in search of a camp spot for the last couple hours. Our first spot that we that we looked up had had winds at about 40 miles an hour. And so we kind of came up the canyon a little further and found a spot where it was a little bit uh, a little bit milder. We're probably running like 20 miles an hour here right now, which is better than we were before, but um, now we're struggling with leveling the vehicles because it's not a very flat spot. So. Yeah, fun times in the Andes, for sure. Despite the wind, we decide to not let it hamper our travels. We took a look at the map and saw that there's an Inca ruin right close to where we were parked. So we thought, let's park the other trucks, let's load up everybody, little bird up to them. So we're in first gear four low crawling up this thing. About to hit 15,000 feet again. Right on. And uh, just climbing away. Four dudes on the rail and three inside. A quarter mile above camp, we reached the end of the road. 
Now it's on foot from here. Right here. It's all pottery, all these, right Yeah, here. Like, all this pottery. It's cool. Yep, and this one, you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's got little lines in it. You can tell this could have been the, the rim of the pottery. Pretty cool. Nate, hey, here's another good one. It's like the bottom of a, it's rounded of a pot. So this one has like a different layers of sediment. I was thinking this is the burned glaze on the outside, but then there's there's different colors inside the pottery wall. So I'm wondering if they just had different layers of clay um, for maybe stability or um, to thicken up the walls. It's pretty spectacular that they're able to make pottery like this. And really cool to see after so many years and still uh, it lasting this long. One last challenge intrigues us. Not far from here, we have the ability to walk into Chile on our own, outside of a border. All right, 0.14. So we, that's not far at all. Only about a half a mile from Chile, from the Chile border in between two volcanoes here. So we made the hike to the volcano. Now we're standing at the Bolivia-Chile border. It's obviously a super remote border. There's not a thing here, barely even a footpath, but we did it. It's cold. It's about 15,800 feet, give or, give or take, right where we're standing. And it's chilly, really bad wind. So we're, uh, we're gonna get some photos and get off the mountain, get back to the warm vehicles. Ready? Ready. So we're Let's go. Take my hand. Oh, Let's we, go. We're marking this rock as Ready? the border. Uh, chilly! Uh, chilly! We made it. It's so chilly. Right. I have haste. Am I right? We got to get him down the mountain real quick. So he's just fantastic. accepting his fate. At least he's willing to help us out. Yeah, you're a real team player. <laughs> Elevation is starting to get the best of us. We're starting to become fatigued from such intense travel for nearly six weeks now. Bolivia has been one of the most spectacular places we have ever seen. It's going to be hard to say goodbye. The vastness of everything, how big the mountains are, how far apart the mountains are, how big the valleys are, is just incredible. I've never been anywhere on earth like this. And then throw on top of that being at 14,000 feet to 16,000 feet, almost 17,000 feet, just coming through these mountains and, and seeing all of these beautiful lakes was just incredible. So Lake Ver uh, Laguna Verde is behind me. There's a volcano to the right of me, and it's, it's just overwhelming, the landscape that we've experienced. So far, I think Bolivia has been the high point for me on this expedition. And now that I've been here and seen how big it is and vast and remote, this is one of the greatest places I've ever been. Bolivia is just truly fantastic. We've been at high elevation for quite a while now. We've seen some really beautiful things. Just our drive yesterday was amazing, just going through the vast expanses of this high alpine uh, terrain. So now we're gonna drop down a little bit, discover some new things, and find ourselves down at the coast in a couple of days. It's weird that, that this part of the trip is coming to a close. We're gonna drop a lot of elevation today. We're gonna be back down in the San Pedro de Atacama Desert, and we're gonna drop uh, five, 6,000 feet just in the next couple hours here, once we get rolling. So excited to see a new country on this trip, experience something new, and uh, get moving. We're gonna have our own fair bit of challenges in Chile as well, I know it, coming up. So yeah, the adventure continues on. All we have to do now is make it to the border and check ourselves out of Bolivia. Now, how do we get through? Whew. 